another episode on the Airborne Podcast. I'm your host, Ajit. That's Big Boy Braz with us. We got Thanos back on the podcast. We got Big Boy Dylan. Dylan. Back on another episode. What's good, bro? I'm good, good, man. Good, Thanks bro. for having me again. Unfortunately, I'm not here to celebrate the Raptors <laughs> this time around. Well, I mean, the last time we had... The last time we had you on, we we kind of made it clear, or you also made it clear that we were done three weeks ago, or like a month ago before we actually <laughs> went on the crazy losing streak. But right. um, it is what it is. You know, at least we have one year where we don't have to stress about the Raptors when they're playing, and we can watch other people stress, other fan bases. Yeah, man. We can watch some young teams, um, up-and-coming teams. Yeah. Especially in the play-in tournament, we got to see some young guys like LaMelo, a little bit of John Morant. So especially the young guys, we got to see where the NBA is headed for the future. 100%. You know, that, Grizzly, that Grizzly squad is, is like something I'm looking forward to seeing. John Morant, Dylan Brooks, um, JV. So that, like, that squad is good to watch. Well, talking about those young, young, young guns, LaMelo Ball, unfortunately, did not make it into the playoff. Mm-hmm. Uh, in, I mean, they didn't get that final playoff spot. They were the... 10th seed, I believe, going into the playing tournament, and they got their butts waxed by the Pacers from the get-go. <laughs> they couldn't find their offense. On unfortunately, they didn't have Gordon Hayward with them still. Uh, Lamelo Ball, Lamelo Ball, obviously got injured, but he came back, and they just didn't have a chance. And we kind of know the results of the playing tournament. One surprising thing that happened was the fact that the Memphis Grizzlies knocked off the Golden State Warriors. A huge win. That was yeah. a good game. That was definitely really good. John Moran, Dylan Brooks, came and play. Definitely a good game. Went into overtime, so definitely. Mm. You know, this play-in tournament, the way it's going right now, it looks really competitive, and I'm I'm all for it right now, to be honest. Yeah, I like it. Yeah, for sure. And then the Pacers, the Wizards game, Pacers got waxed by the Wizards, and they got the final spot in the play-in tournament. They had to play two games because they lost to the Celtics, who secured the seventh spot. And then the Wizards got the final spot in the Eastern Conference. And for the West, the eighth spot was secured by the Memphis Grizzlies. Mm-hmm. And the seventh spot was secured by the Lakers with that tough shot by LeBron James. LeBron. Tough shot. Okay. Oh, no, nasty. Triple, triple, uh, triple vision. You got poke in the eye, yeah. <laughs> the, fact, the fact that he used uh, Steph Curry's you know, long-range three to seal the deal in front of his face. Yo, I seen a funny stat today from, I think it was a House of Highlights or someone. I mm-hmm. said, Kevin Pillar got up in 36 seconds after getting knocked in the face with the fastball, 102 or 92 miles per hour fastball. And LeBron James took 80 seconds to get up from getting poked in the eye. I just, I just thought that was funny. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I saw Kevin Pillar's face. That was fucked. Yeah, that was nasty. That's yeah, nasty. man. That's, That's concussion nasty. protocol for sure. I mean, baseball is a dangerous sport, but. Bro, that nose was fucked. Anyways. Yeah, yeah, for sure. But um, this is crazy. I mean, I, I did want to see Golden State get that final spot just because yeah. I feel like they had a chance to, you know, that Steph Curry effect definitely would have gave the Jazz a little bit of a, you know, a scare. 100%. Um, I'm not sure what Memphis is going to bring to the table because they're still a young team, but I'm all for that Rudy Gobert, JV matchup. Obviously, JV is your favorite player, Braveen. But uh, yeah. <laughs> let's start with the Western Conference and start with that that first round matchup with the Jazz and the Memphis Grizzlies. Um, John Moran. Wait, is Spider playing? I, don't, I, I know he was injured. Yeah, he, he, he is. He is. Yeah? Oh, that's going to be yeah. a tough series for the Grizzlies. Is he? I thought he said that he was most likely going to be off yeah. for the first game. I thought, I thought it said he was, he was playing on Sunday. If he if he's not playing, then you know, it'll be a good Spider. Um, Donovan Mitchell. No, I think he's out. I think he's out. Yeah. yeah. I think yeah, I was gonna say if he's go. out, is a it's it's a better advantage for the Grizzlies. But if he is playing, it's gonna be hard. Yeah, he's out for uh, what a couple of games. He was he's out. Uh, yeah, I think two games minimum. Yeah. Oh, okay, good. Okay. I mean that that gives these guys an advantage for sure. I mean John yeah, Moran, if, sure. if you can drop that thirty-five piece like he did on the Golden State Warriors, and you know they're gonna dare him to shoot because he doesn't have a consistent three-point shot, but. Yeah. That game against Golden State, he made five threes. And if he could do that, there's definitely a chance that they could upset the number one seed in the Jazz. Who do you think the key player for the Jazz uh, for that series? The key player? This key key player for... For that series. The Jazz and uh, Grizzlies series. Who do you think... Who are you looking forward to watching to play? 
I think well, the X is going to be the wings, like yeah. uh, Ingles yeah. and uh, mm-hmm. Bojan Bogdanovic. Yeah, I, don't, I, don't. John I think John Morant for me is I think maybe maybe even JV because I don't feel like I feel like JV can can monster what's his name Rudy Gobert but Rudy Gobert yeah but we'll see. I'm I was gonna, on the um on the experience side of things they have some guys that are able to um retaliate and hit back the clutch points. <laughs> but this relies too much on youth, and JV is their most experienced guy, right? So, yeah, I don't know if they'll be able to John Morant, especially if there's a whole <clears throat> series designed to stop him. I don't know how he's going to react. Yeah, I, th- I think the X factors for both teams. Um, I know for a fact with Donovan Mitchell out, they need uh, the Utah Jazz need Bogdanovich to drop thirty every game. And Clarkson, yo, they need Clarkson. Yeah, and for the Memphis. Know- what about Conley? Is he is he playing too, or is he out? Conley should be back, I think. Yeah, but yeah. the X factor for the Memphis Grizzlies, I think, is Dylan Brooks. Hundred percent, Dylan Brooks. Yeah, mm-hmm. I agree with you. I think Dylan Brooks because of the and, way he and Anderson. Yeah, I think the way Dylan Brooks played against the Golden State Warriors, like if he could play like that, that gives him a definitely chance to, to come out because you expect John Moran to to put up big numbers, and you expect yeah. JV to be solid on the. In, in the in the at the center position, sorry. I also I also Mr. think Saga, yo, for Dylan Brooks. Shout out to Mr. Saga for Dylan Brooks. Yeah, I also feel like um, Jaron Jackson could be that X factor oh, as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. JJJ. Like he missed he missed that playing. Well, he missed the whole season, right? Last year. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So this is more like a redemption yeah. season for him to come yeah. back. He doesn't and... seem to be fitting in well with the shot selection. I yeah. think he had like about like ten points or less. Um, in the previous game, mm-hmm. so I don't know where if he knows or maybe he's still building his confidence. But um, he's lucky he gets to play alongside JV because JV will be in the paint. He doesn't have to worry too much about getting dirty in the paint. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So he's an X factor. I think if there's going to be an X factor, it's going to be him. Yeah. In, in the bubble, he did get the meniscus meniscus tear, but the advantage I think Grizzlies have is if JV gets into foul trouble, that Jaron Jackson can play the five spot and that'll cause Rudy Gobert to have to come outside. They also got Tillman too, so that's another good <laughs> yeah. Bless you. Bless you. Yeah, that that Xavier Tillman dude was uh going off against the Golden State Warriors. Mm-hmm. So yeah, who do you guys got for the series? I'm gonna have to go with the Jazz man. I think those white those Ingles and Bogdanovich, those guys are gonna be serious. X factors and they're gonna outplay the wings like Kyle Anderson and Dylan Brooks on a nightly basis, I think. Yeah, I, I think I think there's gonna be a long series. I think it's gonna go six games. I think the Jazz are gonna win in six. Yeah, got? Jazz? I got the Jazz winning in six, but only uh, if 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 uh, John Morant somehow plays the way he did against the Warriors, and it's a six, it's a it's a up to six. But if not, then I would probably say five. <laughs> See, yeah. For me, like my, I want I want Jazz to win, but my heart's saying Grizzlies. I think they may upset. But like what Nugent said, you know, I think it's only feasible if John Morant fo- pulls through, and you got like people like JJJ and uh, JV holding it on the fort against Rudy Gobert and their their four spot guy. Yeah. I think I think Triple J is gonna show him his his versatility in this series against Rudy Gobert. If he does play, yeah, for sure. If he does get minutes at the, at the five position, you know what? I'm going Grizzlies. Mm-hmm. Fuck it, I'm going Grizzlies. Let's do it. Well, you go gotta look at and, uh, Conley. Gonna... Conley's returning, but playing his old team too. So, yeah, you know the point guard matchup's not going to be as lopsided as most people think for yeah. this one. Yeah, Conley's going to come out and drop twenty to twenty five points. You think Conley's going to outplay in the first game for at? sure? I think this game Conley's going to outplay him the first game one. Yeah, I think so too <clears throat> because experience versus ex- versus inexperience, right? This so, is yeah. this is why I wanted the Warriors to make it to the final spot because they don't have Donovan Mitchell. It would have been like a, a epic matchup. Upset, yeah, yeah, for sure. No man, I was looking at it. Wiggins as a third op, well, Wiggins as a second option on offense. Yeah, can't really go too far. But they also didn't have Ubre for like a bunch of weeks now, right? So the, he he would have been back for the series. Oh, he'd be back. Yeah, he, he, they said he was out for a week before the playing start, tournament started. So, oh, oh yeah, yeah. So he he's been out for a while, but yeah, 
Um, for this matchup that right now, I'd say the Jazz are going to take it in six. And, yeah. You, um, I'm going to go with five. Jazz in five? Like, yeah, yeah, I'm going to go with five. I'm going to go no, with six. six. Yeah, six. You're going to go – so us three all agree, that, all agree that Jazz are moving on in six games? Yeah. And yeah. Brad says Memphis is going to take it in how many games? Let's go seven. Yeah, if Memphis does <laughs> win, it's going to be in seven. All right, uh, next series. Yeah. We got- we're going to go – we got a rematch of last year's bubble series in the first round with the Clippers and the Mavericks. The Clippers pulled a, a shysty move. They're tanking the last couple of games to stay away from the Lakers in the first round. Mm-hmm. I mean, um, I'll give you a problem. The cl- problem I have with Clippers, man. The thing is, no matter how good um, Kawhi is – and Paul George. Mm. Paul George is just the shittier version of Kawhi Leonard at every skill in mm. basketball. I agree. So he'll always be, no matter how good Paul George will play, Kawhi Leonard will always be, you know, have a better game or have better plays or everything. So Paul George and Kawhi will never mesh because they do the exact same thing, but just Paul George is a little shittier at it. Mm-hmm. So that's the problem with in LA. It's easy to prepare for two of the same guy. You know what I mean? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. But these guys, like like I mentioned, like the, the fact that they tanked the last couple of games against OKC and Houston, the two worst teams in the league. Right. And then the, they they had they were in, in a close game with both of them, and the coaches were drop, drying up some googly plays to purposely <laughs> throw the game. <laughs> but I think what the Clippers are initially trying to do right now is just have a blueprint of what the Raptors were in 2019 and slowly take each of our players. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But they don't have the, like, the only problem is they need a guy like a leadership guy, an athletic guy. Yeah. Um, that's why you could see when Dallas plays, each person has a distinct role. Yeah, for sure. I agree with you. No roles. There's no roles in LA. Like, even if you look at ownership, it's just a wild, it's like the wild, wild west out there, you know? <laughs> mm-hmm. But with, I'm, I'm sure if Marcus all got waved by the Lakers because they have Drummond, I, I would bet you in a heartbeat, the Clippers would go and sign him. And then all they need is Kyle Lowry, and they're basically trying to replace Spicy P with Paul George. Re- repeat, re- <laughs> repeat. Yeah, they can try that, man. I mean, this is just a, a broken franchise, and I'm not surprised to see them lose at all. Yeah, the fact that they're trying to force their way into the finals with all these sketchy moves during the regular season and whatnot, I mean, they're, they're a franchise that hasn't been to a conference finals in 50 years, right? Let alone the finals. Yeah, and I think they're just trying too many shortcuts. 100%. Yeah. And Luka Doncic, you know, you can Luka, never speed up. Luka is dangerous. Luka, Luka Magic, you can never speed him up how he plays the game. He plays like he's been in the league for like 10, 12 years. <laughs> and this is only his third year in the season. But, I mean, that man won base. That man alone won two games for that Mavericks roster last season in the bubble. Yo, him and Kristaps Porzingis are actually a good fit. They're a good chemistry. They're doing well. Yeah, Porzingis. Yeah. If Porzingis can stay healthy, that's a solid dynamic. Uh, this, yeah, this would be a tough series. I think uh, uh, your yeah, X factor for Mavs no, no. Is definitely Luca. Yo, Luca. If Luca pulls through, yo, Mavs are gonna. Mm-hmm. It's gotta be both of them. It's gotta be. It's gotta be uh, Kristaps and uh, Doncic, right? Yeah, yeah. You know, you're right. You're right. Because in the last year's series, Doc, I mean, uh, Kristaps got injured, and that's where everything fell down. Like, I mean, I know, I know, Mavs still won two games, but like, if, if uh, Porzingis is still in the series, who knows? If it would have probably went to seven games, right? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Yeah, and it looks like Dallas, they didn't really develop a lot. I mean, they didn't get much players, but they just developed a lot of chemistry since last year. Yeah. yeah. Clippers, you can kind of say, maybe didn't get worse, but they didn't get. Much better through. I like. I mean, I, I I like the signing of Rondo. I, I feel like Rondo brings that playoff mentality, like that leadership. Yeah, um, but they kind of wait. Was the trade for um? It was a trade for Lou Will, right? Yeah, it was yeah, Lou Will. Yeah. See, I Ron, mean, Lou Will has his he has his fit in for the second lineup, six man of the year kind of thing. So. Mm-hmm. He did a good job with the Clippers. He's a, he'll always do a good job with the second lineup. They basically traded Rondo. They basically traded Lou Will and Montrezl Harold for Rondo and Serge Ibaka. Yeah. And Dallas, who did they add? 
They traded their way. They traded away Seth Curry and Doc Rivers, <laughs> father and father-in-law or, and son-in-law. Yeah, for uh, Josh Richardson. Yeah, that's a good. And, that's more and, size for them too. And Ty Lu. Basically. Tim Hardaway is probably having one of the best seasons of his career. Yo, he's killing this year, yo. He, uh, he might be an X-Factor too. Who knows? He's not even... The problem with him is he's not consistent. That's yeah, he's not consistent at all. No, no, for sure. And I don't even know if that, that that's a positive, um, you know, addition for for the Dallas Mavericks with trading away Seth Curry for Josh Richardson because Seth Curry was lighting him up last season. Word. Who do you got, though, for the series? I'm going... Honestly, I'm. <laughs> I would go Dallas. I'm. I think I'm gonna go Dallas. No, I'm kidding. I'm gonna go. Um, I'm going Clippers in seven. Hmm. Yeah, I got Mavs in six. I'm gonna. Look, I'm gonna. I'm, I'm trusting Luca Magic. Yeah. I'm gonna go Mavs in seven. Hmm. Energy. Yeah. I'm. I'm gonna go with Clippers in six. This is the, to me, this is gonna be the closest series. Yeah, I, I feel mean, like I feel, cool. yeah, I feel like if 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 Porzingis somehow stays healthy, the series, I feel like Mavs could come through in Game Seven. Mm-hmm. Um, but if Clippers somehow get Serge Ibaka back, because Ibaka, bro, he hasn't even played for like what thirty games so Serge, far. Serge Ibaka will be back. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So he's he he, I, I feel like, Game Four, right? Game Four, Game Five. I don't yeah. think he'll be back anytime soon. No, no, he's already, no, he's he's already back. He's he's played. He played the last couple of games before the season ended. Oh, oh, he did. Oh, I didn't know that. No, but I'm just saying, um, Serge Ibaka to me is the X factor for the Clippers. Yeah, I agree with you. No, I agree. Yeah. Okay, so we're going. Me and you are going Clippers. You said six. I said seven. Yeah. And Dylan and Bravs are going Mavs in six and seven. Yeah, I'm going six yeah. and seven. Yeah. It, we'll see who's right at the end of the series. Next up, the Denver Nuggets, Portland Trailblazers. This was a matchup from a couple seasons ago. This is a rematch, basically. Where the the Portland Trailblazers came through in 2019, beating the Denver Nuggets in the second round in seven games. You know, one second before you go, mm-hmm. I don't think this Portland team is a six seeded team. They're mm-hmm. not a six seeded. Yeah, they're not. They're not. Opinion. So this is, a, this, this is gonna be a fun series. That, that's what I'm saying. Like these type of matchups in the Western Conference right now, like the bottom teams for each matchup. If they were to win this series, I wouldn't be surprised. That's how tight this ma- these matchups are. Like, I wouldn't be surprised if any of these bottom teams, the four, I mean, the five, six, seven, eight, were to win a matchup. Yeah. Um. But yeah, with the Denver Nuggets and the Portland Trailblazers, it's a rematch from a couple of seasons ago. You got Yusuf Nurkic going against his former team in the Denver Nuggets. You got Carmelo Anthony going against his former team in the Denver Nuggets. You got Jokic, the MVP. More than likely, probably gonna put up some monster numbers on Nurkic. Yeah, and you got Jamal Murray's out, but you got Compazzo, you got Aaron Gordon as a new addition, you got Michael Porter. Also, thirty year rookie. Yo. I think, bro. I think the I think the factor of that. Um, I think the the fact that Jamal Murray's out for this this whole season is gonna play a huge factor in the series because mm-hmm. I don't I don't know who's gonna stop uh, Lillard. Yeah, they don't really yeah, have a I guard. Think, um, Norman Powell's going to have a lot of confidence coming in too. And he's yeah. going to be attacking because Denver's defense isn't really that uh, known to be that strong. Yeah, they're lacking guard play too. So, yeah, so Norman Powell's going to be going at him a lot this series. Yeah. They're just going to put a lot of pressure on the guards. Spelly Campanizo, a Jeets boy. Uh, <laughs> that guy looks like he was my science teacher <laughs> back in the Givney. Mr. Afonso. Yeah. So, I think he's going to get worked a little bit. You might see him drop a couple times this series. I think Jamal Murray going down in this series is definitely a big, a huge, huge hit for them. Because, huge loss. Because the guard play, the three guards on Portland are going to light him up, I think. Um, wait, when you look at you them, continue, yeah. wait, Rivers, Rivers is gone too, right? He's out? No, Rivers is there. Rivers will be there. Oh, he's still playing. Okay, okay. But I just, I don't yeah. think Rivers is enough to take out Portland. I mean, that's a little bit of defense there, but... Dame's just too nasty from the three-point line. Same with CJ McCollum. Yeah. They just got the size, though, in Denver. Yeah. Michael Porter, Aaron Gordon. But they uh, got – well, Portland's got guys like Covington there that could defend them as well, right? And for same position. Norman Powell's not a slouch on the defense. Yeah. Um, 
But yeah, this should be a good matchup as well. And I'm I'm gonna go Portland in six for this one. I think it's gonna be an upset. Not, not an upset. It is an upset because they're lower seed, but it's not really an upset because of the talent they have on their roster. You, I got I got Portland as well. I got Portland in six. Yeah. Yeah. I got Portland in six too. Doug? Yeah, I'm gonna have to go with uh Denver. I think the Jokers, there's not really uh someone who can contain him. On Portland, mm-hmm. so I think he's gonna take it out and show why he's the MVP this series. In how many games? Because there might be a lot of doubters. So I'm gonna say Denver and six. Jeez, okay. Time CJ McCollum and Damian Lillard. They're probably gonna need to break up sooner rather than later. I think so. Let me explain to you why I pick Portland. I pick Portland because you got you got hood not not hood and mellow. You got old school mellow. He's he's finally grinding it back, right? Then you got. CJ McCollum, Damian Lillard, even Norman Powell. Even Norman Powell is, a, is an issue, right? Who's the next factor, right? So to me, who's going to guard all four of these guys, right? Joker's, Joker's going to guard, um, what's his name? Nurse, Nurchik? No. Nurkic. Nurkic, right? Yeah. He's going to guard him. And like the other four guys, who's going to guard them, right? Your ball movement's sick. Like who's going to guard them? I just That's think just, that. No, I think Portland's defense is one of the worst in the league, but. Yeah. They got too much offensive power, I think, yeah. for Denver to handle the series. Like, like Norman Powell is like a defensive defensive stud, right? Even though he really wasn't, or like he is good defense, but on Portland he's like a stud because they don't play proper defense. Yeah, yeah. But to add on to your point, Ajit, I was saying um, the fact that their defense is so shitty, mm-hmm. and the fact that they're so they have so many players that can create their own shot and stuff. I just feel like the Joe, I feel like Denver doesn't have that because of the fact of Jamal Murray getting injured. And I feel like it's going to take a huge toll on Jokic because he's got to facilitate rebound. He's got to create the offense. It's a lot of work for him to do, right? And I don't feel, I don't, I don't feel, I feel like he can do it. He can pull through one, two games. I don't think he's going to pull through the whole series by himself. Yeah. I, I think, like you said, um, the defense is probably like second worst after Washington. But their mm-hmm. offense, I mean, Denver's no, no, like not a slouch on the offensive end either. Like they have Michael Porter Jr., they got Aaron Gordon, they got Austin yeah. Rivers who can make plays at times, and they got Jokic. But I just feel like at the end of the day, when it comes to clutch moments, I think Dame's going to take over. All right. So just to clarify on that, us three, me, Bravs, and Anujan are going with Portland in six, mm. and Dylan's going with Denver in seven. Six. Denver six. in six. Denver in six. Okay. And uh, all right, next matchup. This is a nice, juicy matchup. Shout out to Bilal for maybe crying when this series starts. He's gonna, he's gonna be ripping his hair. You got two best friends in LeBron James and Chris Paul playing each other for the first time and in the playoffs ever since they've been in the NBA. And the Phoenix Suns. I mean, these guys came out the bubble eight and zero last season. You knew they were gonna turn the, you know, turn the Basically, you turn the, the narrative, change the narrative in turn terms of being, back. yeah, they're known as one of the shittier teams. And now they're the second seed in the Western Conference going up against the Lakers, who were the first seed in the West for a bit there at the start of the season. But with their injuries, to their main guys like LeBron and AD, before Drummond was acquired, they dropped heavily in the standings and they had to basically play in the playing tournament. That's how bad the season's gone. And they beat the Golden State Warriors to get that seventh seed. But now they don't have home court to manage for the rest of the playoffs. And the last team to win a championship doing that was the Houston Rockets, where they were sixth seed. And that was in 1995. So what do you think these guys' chances are in terms of coming out of this round? I know they got the more experience. They're the former, I mean, they're the defending NBA champions right now. But I do think that this is going to be a definite upset in my eyes. What do you guys think? I think, I think this plays this this whole series for the Lakers to win this series. Mm-hmm. Um, I feel like AD has to step up and be the number one guy because I feel mm-hmm. like at this after the injury of LeBron, I don't think LeBron like is uh, he can, he's he's still the number one guy, but offensively, I feel like AD needs to step it up a notch because pretty much the team is his now, right? Mm-hmm. So you think if, uh, you think what's his name? Um, DeAndre Ayton will do will do a good job defending. AD or yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, 
I don't know. I mean, it, it's it's. I don't know. Is he is he guarding him or is is Drummond well, guarding? Him? DeAndre Ayton is a center position. Is plays a five, so Drummond would play. But AD's. Oh, yeah, gonna, shit. I forgot about Drummond's five. Shit. I thought, yeah. I thought AD was five. My bad. AD's going to yeah. play the five position at times, but I think Jay Crowder is going to be guarding him. Oh shit. But yeah, like, cool. yeah, but I agree with what you're saying. AD definitely needs to be the best player in the series, and I think if he plays a four position, he has to eat Jay Crowder every single time. Mm. To, the ball. to to keep to keep it going, I feel like um I feel like the fact that uh, the Suns made it to the playoffs this year, I think Booker is gonna start killing it this series. Like I don't think this man needs um I don't think he needs like like experience to play in the playoffs. I feel like I feel like he has a similar similar game style as Kobe used to have. Mm-hmm. I don't know because of the fact that he's able to score seventy points. And like he can score well, so like he also has a huge factor. And Chris Paul, Chris Paul is pretty much the leader on this team, yeah. and like he's he's similar to LeBron. Like he can he can like um, he can take a team to the like not to the promised land, but he can lead a team. You know? Yeah. And I don't know. I just this is a tough one. This is really a tough one. I think for Phoenix to come out of this series, actually win it and surprise a lot of people. Devin Booker needs to average like 35 points a game to to win the series. Yeah. And for the Lakers, AD needs to be the alpha male. And LeBron can also lead the team, but you don't want him to use all his energy in the first round. He just yeah. needs to be the orchestrator. That's it. And then just yeah. scoring every now and then. And you can see the matchup with Chris Paul and Dennis Schroeder, former teammates from the OKC team from last season. Yeah, but they're um the the offense on LA is really behind or two steps behind compared to uh phoenix so yeah. i think that's the main thing because matchup wise they match up pretty good phoenix really athletic mm-hmm. um la has good players all around yeah but you know it's the i guess it's going to be the stops and right now phoenix looks like they're going to play better defense with yeah. that athleticism but yeah. it has to be lakers in the end they're going to pull through with the two better players um, but Phoenix is going to make it a tough time on them with their their speed and their uh, yeah. I, I really I really don't like the fit of Drummond with the Lakers. I don't know why. I mean, to rebound, yeah, he's yeah, good. it's kind of weird. No, yeah. I think I went from it, like twenty boards to like what like nine to ten boards. No. Yeah. Yeah, and their best um, their best lineups are with AD at the five. I think. Yeah. I think AD and LeBron playing the four and five is probably the best combo they've got. That's where they can really abuse mismatches and whatnot. But I think AD is enough to play a lot of five in the series if they're going to have a. But a Kuzma's team. totally lost in, on this team now. This is Kuma. If, if they do put AD and LeBron at the four and five, Kuzma can play the three. Yeah. yeah. But I just, I think that Kuzma, this is, this is the final year with the Lakers. I don't think. Uh, when he's leaving? No, I, I, he has a three-year contract. He signed a three-year, $30 million contract this yeah. season. But I just feel like his fit is just not it's not happening. Yeah. And he's got a ring now, so it doesn't really matter. I mean, I don't know if he's really a ring chaser type player, but he's he can just go get the bag now, you know, playing third. I, I yeah, and, um, yeah. He has skill, but it's just overshadowed right now. And he was, he was 19 minutes last game, zero points. 0 yeah. for 2. He didn't even take any shots. Three rebounds. Mm-hmm. He's not even getting touches, zero assists, right? So that's he's just there running and playing defense right now. That that's why they're they don't want to put him in the starting role. But I think with Tail and Horton Tucker kind of flourishing now, that's kind of made Kyle Kuzma take a step back as well. I, I do agree with you guys. I think Kuzma is done this year. I don't think he's I don't think he's returning back to Lakers. I mean they, they have to trade him in order for that to happen, but I just think okay. that yeah, they can find a better piece. Like I feel like they could have traded Kuzma at the deadline for a guy like Derrick Rose. Um, but yeah, for this series, I'm going Lakers in six. Yeah, Lakers in six. Um, yeah, I'll go with that too. Lakers in six. Yeah, okay. Brabs? I'm going, I'm going okay. Lake. Oh, oh, no, no, go ahead. I don't know. I see for me, I was kind of, I was leaning towards Suns just because the whole Chris Paul and Devin Booker. But I do agree. I do agree with you guys. I don't think Lakers are a seven seed team. No. I do. Th- I do think they're like top notch, like one to one to four, right? Anywhere in there, one to four. If they were so, healthy, they would have. They were healthy, they would have been the number one. Hundred percent. 
See, I'm going I'm to take the risk. I'm going to go with the Lakers. Um, I'm going to probably put them, put them Lakers in six. So we all agree on this one, Lakers in six? I'm going with Lakers in seven. Okay. But we're all picking Lakers to make it to the next round. Mm-hmm. LeBron, all right. yeah, I hope, I hope LeBron comes through. Yeah, LeBron has he's, he has these nagging ankle injuries, but, you know, when it comes to the playoffs, he goes zero dark 30, so we'll see how this goes. It's crazy how this is the first time Chris Paul and Thing are playing against each other. Yeah, they've been in opposite conferences for a while, right? I mean, LeBron's been in the East for most of his career, and Chris Paul was in the West, so the only way yeah. they would face each other was in the finals. Mm-hmm. Chris, Paul, Chris Paul hasn't sniffed the finals. He's been to the conference finals with Houston, but that was about it. All right, so we're done with the Western Conference first-round brackets. Let's turn it over to the Eastern Conference. We wanted the matchup to switch up between Boston and Washington. I wanted to see 76ers go against Boston because they swept them last season. So that would have been a fun matchup. And mm-hmm. then I wanted to see Russell Westbrook, James Harden, KD all go at each other on the Eastern, <laughs> on the Eastern Conference side. You know? <laughs> but, um, you know, we didn't get the matchups we wanted. And we got a Joel Embiid, Russell Westbrook <laughs> show, uh, showdown. Yeah, I think that's uh, that matchup there to me is one of the most animosity between the two teams. Yeah. yeah. You already see like on Instagram and all these videos of Beal mocking Embiid. Um, from the past, they had a little bit of Instagram issues. Animosity. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. So I think it's going to be a little bit of a, a more physical series. This is the most physical one for the first round. Yo, it's gonna be an interesting series. I, I I like I like old school ball where people were like will fight against each other, like not like physical fight, but like head to head, more emotion, more mm-hmm. like you know, like get to get the F out of here. Like now you see a lot of these playoffs where like they're all boys, right? So they just like tap each other's ass and like whatever. But you know, like this is a series I'm looking forward to. Yeah, and um the X Factor, I mean, both of the teams have two all stars, which is pretty rare. I think uh, mm-hmm. throughout the playoffs in the first round, both teams having two all stars. So I mean, the third option is going to be to me the X factor. So it's going to be, in my opinion, Tobias Harris, third option on Philly, and it's a toss up who's the third option on Wizards. So that's going to be the X factor to me. I yeah, think I agree with Dylan. Yeah, sorry. Go ahead. No, no, I'm just saying I disagree with Dylan. Oh, yeah, you all calm down. No, oh. no, no, I agree with them. Like, because oh. it, it comes down to the third third uh, option, right? Because we all know, like, uh, Embiid, Embiid. I don't know. I don't know about Simmons. Offensively, Simmons won't. I don't know if he'll bring it. I feel like he's more of the facilitator. Um, mm-hmm. Like what Dylan said, Tobias Harris. Um, I, I, I kind of consider him more of a second option, more yeah. than Simmons now. Um, yeah, it just comes to those two players and then Beal and Westbrook. Westbrook tends to have, like, his nights where he struggles offensively. Yeah. So I don't know where that's gonna where that's gonna go, and um, yeah, just I think like, um, Bertans Bertans is gonna win them a game for sure. Probably knock down yeah. have a game of like five threes. Yeah. So you know it just depends on those all stars who's gonna come out. So stats wise, mm-hmm. I think they were pretty close in uh, today's earlier game. Yeah. If we look at their numbers, I was just pulling it up. Mm-hmm. Um, if we compare both of them, they've kind of probably evened out each other, right? Yeah, were, I was uh sorry. I was going to ask you who the third option was for Philly, and I realized it's Tobias Harris. And Tobias Harris is nasty, so I do agree with Dylan in that point that it does come down to third, the their third shooter, right? You got Embiid versus Russell, sorry, Embiid and Simmons versus Russell and and uh, Bradley Beal. Then you got Tobias Harris versus the white guy, the Red Rocket. So let's see. That but yeah. the, the thing the, the the sorry Dylan, you have something to say. No, I was going to say, like, um, the only issue is Philly's offense is a little bit predictable. Yeah, mm. yeah, 100%. But I think with shooters like Danny Green and Seth Curry there, um, it definitely makes a lot of things easier. Um, you know, they, they've had struggles in the past few seasons when they've lost guys like Ben and Ellie, Marco Bellinelli, Ersan Ilyasova, J.J. Redick. Like, those guys were there to spread the floor, and those were their best years when they had those shooters around them, and now they've replaced those guys. With Seth Curry, Danny Green, you got Korkmaz off the bench. So, like, they've got shooters to help spread the floor with Ben Simmons and Joel Embiid. 
what I wanted to say was the Russell Westbrook matchup and the Joel Embiid matchup is probably going to be the highlight of this series because of all the animosity, whether it was Westbrook getting posterized by Joel Embiid or Westbrook waving away those guys in a game when he was with the <laughs> OKC Thunder yeah, when they're on the bench. Or, you know, that there was one part where I think but there's one game where Joel Embiid bodied Russell Westbrook and threw him to the ball. Oh, he dunked it on him, right? He dunked it on him, but he also, like, fell on top of him and mm-hmm. crushed him almost. But um, <laughs> I think the third <laughs> – I think the only way this is going to be a short series and Philly's going to win this in, like, uh, four or five games is mm-hmm. if Russell Westbrook gets in Russell Westbrook's way. And Yeah, yeah, if, I agree. Yo, that's actually a smart point. Yeah, I agree with you. It's a good it's, analogy. I just think that if he can play at a high level and not be so, you know, not let get let his ego go up his ass too high and, you know, want to do everything himself, he needs to let Bradley Beal be the best player in this, on the team, let alone this series, if they have a chance to even win this game, win the series in seven games. But mm-hmm. I don't give them a high chance in this. I think they made the play in tournament and made the playoffs for no reason because uh, I believe the series is, is going to be over in four or five. Yeah, I got Philly in five, yo. You got Philly in five? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's going to go Philly probably in six because, uh, again, man, after Beal and Westbrook, there's a big drop off there. And that's going to be sh- very prevalent. And they're going to start getting tired. I'm, I won't be surprised to see maybe them being overworked 40 plus minutes next game. And that's going to be disaster. They're going to get desperate for this win. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. I'm gonna say it's um it's five games, only only because I feel I, I'm I'm kind of I, ha- I have faith in Westbrook coming through. I feel like Wait, he, who he, you he got? Goes, you got Philly or you got Washington? No, 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 I'm saying Philly in five. Okay, I'm saying Philly in five, but that's only if Westbrook doesn't get in his own way. Yeah. Um, but if he does get in his way, I'm saying it's a sweep. Ooh. Um, I think. Well, I mean, Doc Rivers has not been on the on the proper side of like unfortunate events when it comes to playoff <laughs> playoff curses blowing multiple 3-1 leads so I wouldn't be surprised if he was the the man behind a uh, number 8 beating a number 1 somehow <laughs> but I just think they their their defense is so atrocious right now I mean I know they played better defense towards this little run they had to make the playoffs but I just think there's too much firepower for for Philly I think they don't have an answer for Joel Embiid and the way he's playing. If this was the 2019 Joel Embiid when he played the Raptors, I think they'd have a fighting chance. But I think Joel, Joel Embiid is just a monster right now. And he's having like a shock type of type of season right now. Yeah. And I just he's don't think, Alex, yeah. And I just don't think Alex Len, Robin Lopez, or Daniel Gafford have any chance of guarding him without getting into foul trouble. Yeah. Right. I agree with you. So we all agree that. The Philly, Philadelphia 76ers are going to move on from this series in four mm-hmm. or five games, right? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Now, this one's interesting, and I think this works to Philly's favor as well, this matchup. I think they have an easy path to get to the conference finals for the first time since 2001 because they're going to play the winner of the Knicks and the Hawks. Now, this is going to be an exciting playoff series because these are both teams coming into the playoffs for the first time in a while. Mm-hmm. All these young guns like Trey Young, John Collins are going up against Julius Randle or a vintage, Rose. a vintage Derek Rose, yeah. a veteran. Yeah. Um, I think this is going to be a tight series. I think this is going to go seven games. Um, I think there's going to be a lot of excitement, a lot of home court advantage is definitely going to be a factor in this, I think. And um, I think I got the New York Knicks making this um, – I think I got them making it to the second round. But I think this is going seven games. Yeah, I think it's going um, seven. But I'm going to have to go with the uh, revamped. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, no, sorry. I was just saying I'm going Knicks on this seven. Knicks and seven. Yeah, I know what you guys are seeing. I know you guys are seeing the Knicks because they're actually the hot team in the NBA. Yeah. But if you look at their team compared to, like, the hype that the Knicks get, it's not – It's there's no validity behind all the hype. It's just the fans and all that, Spike Lee. But if you look at how ETLs changed their roster from coach to supporting cast mm-hmm. and set roles, 
each position is competitive on uh, the Atlanta Hawks. Um, so Knicks, they just kind of rely on bully ball. Yeah. Uh, so Gallinari. Saying, so, yeah. Simon, I'm going to cut you off. So you're saying old school Lou Will was a good trade. Like adding him to that roster was actually a good, was worth it, right? Yeah, he keeps it competitive and he leads the bench to make sure the starters are uh, capable of keeping teams away from them. Mm-hmm. He brings that strength off the bench, so it's worth it. Always the second, uh, the bench is also key in this series in particular. I agree with you. Lou Will's getting Magic City on a regular basis, those wings, lemon pepper wings. Yeah. I mean, that's what that's the key to him. The dry buckets. rub, right? Yeah, that's the yeah. that's, that's the key to him dropping buckets in the series. Right. And like Dylan said, like obviously both teams are not fully established. They haven't proven anything. Coaching, I think it's gonna be pretty competitive. I think it really comes down to coaching in this with these young guns. Tom Thibodeau is a vet. Nate Nick Nate McMillan is a vet. And um, honestly, Spike Lee is, <laughs> I don't know if he's going to be a factor, but, you know, he's going to go buck wild since they can bring fans back into the arenas. And yeah. if Julius Randle doesn't turn into Spicy P in this series, because this is going to be the first time we see him in the playoffs, I think um, if Julius Randle turns into Spicy P from the bubble, then Ox are going to win this because they have a lot of depth. We keep forgetting they have a lot of players in, in, on each at each position, right? Yeah, so like I'm looking at their bench right now. Mm-hmm. Their sec, their second five is Gallinari, Lou Will, Tony Snell, uh, Kevin Herder, mm-hmm. and the rookie, I guess. But they went nine. They went nine guys deep. So those are their four guys off the bench who are way better than the next four on Knicks, who are uh, Burks, Obi Toppin, Gibson, Quickly, and Rose. But if we get a vintage Rose performance, I think they could they have a chance. Julius Randle has to be how he was in the regular season for them to even have a shot. Um, yeah. But I like the matchup with John Collins and Julius Randle. But yeah. o- overall, I think this is going to come down to Trey Young versus Julius Randle. Trey Young is like ice, man. That guy's nasty. I'm excited. To see, I'm excited for the series, but I got Knicks on, I got Knicks on this. Yeah, I, I think Knicks are going to yeah. win with home court. I think uh, Knicks are going to be coming out of the series to get waxed by the Philadelphia 76ers in the next series. Mm. But uh, um, I'm going to have to go with my boys, the Migos from ATL, <laughs> dropping Culture 3. Ah, uh-huh. ha. drop. Uh, ATL is going to take this one, man. Yeah. Is there, no, this, their hype is. Series, uh, man. This is a really good. Sorry, I cut you off again, but this is a really good series, man. It's going to be fun to watch. You know? Yeah. yeah. You got two young bucks going at it. It's going to be fun. I think every game is going to be pretty tight. I don't think it's going to be a, a blowout or any type of way. I think it's Yo, just going to go down to the wire. Yo, it's going to be Andrew Wiggins versus Dylan Sammy at Devon Glenn, uh, Glenn Shields versus McGivney when they went head to head, yo. So, exactly, yeah. <laughs> so, we got so we got the Migos going up against Michael Rappaport, and you got Migos coming out in six or seven? Yeah, Migos yeah. versus Spike Lee, fam. Ravine's favorite rapper, Young M.A., is going to go against uh, the Migos. We'll see what... <laughs> who the hell Young M.A. is his fan. <laughs> I see okay. me rapping to his, her song. Sorry. <laughs> okay, so so we're going... So yeah, I'm going... Anyway, I'm, I'm going... Wait, I didn't, I'm saying Nick's in seven. Good but, man. Um, You're a good man. But, no, but uh, wait, wait. Uh, I can't pick a side, bro, because it, it could go either way. Like... If Julius plays like if Julius plays like Pascal Siakam in the bubble, then Atlanta's winning in seven. Yeah. But if, if, if Ju- yeah. but if Julius plays the way he he did in the regular season, I think he, it's gonna go to seven, and it's gonna be even better for them because they have home court advantage, and that like my brother said, it's gonna play a huge uh, it's gonna play a huge factor in the, going into the series. Yeah, I think both crowds are gonna be intense whenever they go to either home court, but. Like I said, Julius Randle is hyped up right now. He's excited because he's in the conversation for MVP, most improved player, all these mm-hmm. categories. So he's probably, you know, his his, <clears throat> ego, his ego is probably far up his ass right now. And right. he doesn't realize what intensity comes in the playoffs because he hasn't been in the playoffs since being in the league for seven years. And I feel like he's going to try to do too much. But, you know, he doesn't have the luxury like having a Kawhi Leonard on his team to kind of settle down. 
like Pascal did the first year when we won the championship. But yeah, I think that he needs to be able to drop the same similar numbers he did in the regular yeah. season for them to I, win I the think, I, games. Yeah, I, I agree with you. I think the first game you might have, I think there might be a little bit of nerves, like a nervousness, like just like jitter just coming in in the first game for him to like, I feel like he's going to struggle in the first game. I feel like after that first game, he's going to come through and he's going to pull through in seven. I'm going with the Knicks on this. Yeah, Knicks and seven. seven. We both yeah. agree, Knicks and seven. Raps? Yeah. I got Knicks and Knicks and seven as well. And um, Dylan and Eagles and how many? Uh, Hawks and six. Okay, okay. Ooh, Eagles. All right. Ne- the, next, <laughs> the next series we got is a rematch from the bubble in the second round, and that is the Milwaukee Bucks going up against the Miami Heat. The Miami Heat are, you know, the defending Eastern Conference champions from the bubble. And they've lost a few pieces from last season on their roster, but they got the main core still there. Milwaukee's had a couple additions with Drew Holiday, P.J. Tucker, Bobby Portis. And I don't think this is going to be the same Milwaukee team that's going to choke in the, like they did in the bubble because they got guys who can close in the, fin- in, the, close in, in the final seconds of a quarter like a Middleton or a Drew Holiday that could take the last shot. They don't have to depend on Giannis to do everything. You know, the X factor for this series, sorry, cut you off, is Drew Holiday, 100%. Um, I, I do think, you know, Miami's obviously not a number six seed. If you, yeah. were to, if you were to pick between New York Knicks, Atlanta Hawks, and Miami, you put Miami at number four. But I think Miami has a chance to win the series, but I just think with the additions, with the new additions of P.J. Tucker, Bobby Porters, and Drew Holiday, I think it's going to be a little too much. Middleton has another year of experience from having to carry this team against the Miami Heat for a bit when Giannis was out. He had an explosive game last season in the bubble in the playoffs where he went for like a 40-piece, I think, and he won them a game. Yeah. but um, I think the white boys can pull out uh, one or two games. <laughs> one game. Jimmy Butler probably win one, and that's about it for Miami. Just two games they're gonna, probably going to win. Yeah, so Duncan Robinson and Tyler Hero, you think are going to come out and show out? Yeah, at least one game. Those two, well, one of them is going to go off for maybe over five threes, five to six threes. And that's going to be a way for Miami to get some sort of win. But you got to forget, we can't forget that they had a key piece in Ola Depot who was supposed to take over a bit of the role from Jimmy Butler. Mm. just to give him some rest because he was probably had the most minutes in the playoffs last year mm. yeah. or up there. So I don't see him, be, him being able to guard, t- deal with Giannis and have a good effective game on the offensive end. Yeah, Oladipo, they basically got rid of Avery Bradley and Kelly Olenek for nothing because Oladipo's out with the yeah. surgery. And so Jimmy, you know, the more of the lows gonna be back on Jimmy. Kelly Olynyk is balling in Houston, or was, but that's because he's playing for the worst team in the NBA, and they don't care how many shots he took. But he would have been a valuable piece for these guys. He was last season in the bubble. I don't even know who the backup center is now with Bam Adebayo. Like, uh, Myers Leonard is out. Leonard. Yeah, so Myers Precious, right? Myers Leonard. They shipped him off to OKC after that issue. Yeah. On, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so like yeah. I don't even know who the is it precious uh no but precious precious Achua is like power forward, right? Yeah, but I feel like they play small ball in the second lineup. I don't think they really uh have yeah. another center. Well yeah. that's a problem because Milwaukee's a huge, pretty yeah. huge team. Yeah, no they, but also, they also added the Trevor Rizzo, right? Yeah. Oh yeah. And they got Igodala still, so they got some high key defenders on that team. Yeah. Even I feel I feel like they're not team, yo. Yeah. I feel like I feel like going into the series of the X factor for me is it is Drew Holiday, but I also feel like it's Giannis. It's similar to the to the to the Wizards in seventy six series. Like Giannis can't like I, I remember last year Giannis missed crucial free throws in the series and he missed crucial game like he missed crucial shots in the in the series, which led to them losing to Miami last year. And I feel like I don't know, I feel like to for I feel like for the Milwaukee Bucks to even like to sweep at least to sweep like 
I think Giannis needs to perform the way he he's supposed to as that that go to superstar that we all know, right? He needs to be the MVP, Giannis, not like yeah, he's, yeah, exactly. He's got to be the MVP, Giannis, and he's got to step up, make free throws, hit th- hit open threes. So like, because like like every time he shoots a three, they always leave him open, right? You gotta make them, you gotta punch them, make them, make them guard you, you know. His Miami, Miami team would have been a lot more lethal. If you think about it, at the trade deadline, their team was supposed to be Goran Dragic at the point guard, Oladipo at shooting guard, Jimmy Butler at small forward. Then you got Bam Adebayo, Bam Adebayo at power forward, and LaMarcus Aldridge at center. That's what their lineup should have been. Yeah, yeah. But this would have been this would have been much different if if they actually went with the trade mm-hmm. for Lowry. Yeah. Yeah, this would have been a lot more different. I think the Raptors should have pulled the trigger on that with Duncan Robinson and Kendrick Nunn and Kelly Olenek. But it is what it is. Um, they're not going to make it past the first round after representing the East last season. I think the Milwaukee mm. Bucks close out the series in six games, like Dylan mentioned. The White Boys are going to win them a game, and I think Jimmy's going to win them a game. And that's all she wrote for their season. Yo, I got yeah. I got Bucks in five. Mm-hmm. I think I think I'm I think I'm gonna just uh I'm gonna go um I'm gonna go Bucks in seven. Ooh, seven, eight. Jeez. I just feel like I feel like Miami uh, even even the loss of uh, Kelly Olynyk and all those other guys and uh, Avery Bradley and Oladipo for him being injured. I just feel like Miami has a lot of a lot of players that could play play solid defense and have they 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 pretty much have a blueprint to stop Giannis at this point. You know. Well, but yo, I think like, Chris I Milton is the X factor here. I think Chris Milton yeah, matched yeah. Up, is matched up nice in this series. I think mm. the blueprint was from us, to be honest. I think we're the only one. We're the ones who laid out the no, blueprint. I, I I know, but I'm just saying, like Miami already, they already know how to beat. They they already know how to stop Giannis. Mm-hmm. So they're gonna do that. That's it. They're gonna have the same mentality going to the series. But I just I feel like I feel like Miami has a lot more to give. So, I'm, but I'm still saying Bucks are gonna win in seven. Yeah, I mean, they got Trevor Reza, they got Iguodala, they got Jimmy Butler to defend, but I think Jay Crowder losing him was a big loss for mm-hmm. them. Mm-hmm. I don't think they've still recovered from that because Jay Crowder was, he's a pretty big dude who can defend, you know, he, he knows how to defend Giannis. Yeah. And he also shot the three really well for them, which gave him the advantage in certain games in that series. But, yeah, yeah Dylan, go ahead. I think um, Ariza is going to help share that workload. Jimmy Butler, but again, uh, they kind of didn't improve from last year. I see they maybe got they just everyone knows what they're up to now. I'm in Miami, what they can do and how they run their offense. It's a lot of hero ball, I guess, and kick it out to threes. And Milwaukee's defense is going to be a big factor in this one. Mm -hmm. I think they're going to be able to stifle up, uh, Bam. Bam's going to be a non-factor in this one. I mean, they're, they're, the upgrade they made at the point guard position with the size and just the defensive prowess of a Drew Holiday over Eric, Eric Bledsoe. Yeah. Over Eric Bledsoe. I mean, that's a huge upgrade. And I think him alone, I mean, he makes threes at a more higher clip than Eric Bledsoe ever did in his career. And I think Eric Bledsoe was a downfall but because if you notice in the series last year against them, they played a lot more George Hill because mm-hmm. he can spread the floor. But um, yeah, I mean, but I kind of to add on to your point, I kind of realized that um, I kind of see Giannis um being the primary uh playmaker in that that scenario because they had no point guard to like rely on. But even now, the addition of Drew Holiday, I feel like that's gonna that's gonna help for sure. I just and by think- the way, um, the center backup center for mm-hmm. Miami looks like Dwayne Dedman. Oh shit! Oh yeah! Oh yeah! They have Dwayne Dedman. Even playing though, I don't even know if he's getting minutes. He got twelve minutes last game. Shit. Okay, but, but also uh, Precious yeah. didn't play. But um, what I what I, what I wanted to say was they built a wall, basing off like either the people they had that could shoot the three last season, right? Eric Bledsoe wasn't going to make that many threes, and I think who was playing power forward for them last season? Well, Giannis was. Yeah, a power I swear, Ilya Sovo was on that team, though. No? Yeah, Ilya Sovo was there. But I just think with P.J. Tucker is standing in the corner, which is one of his, you know, he has a high, he can shoot at a high clip from that corner. Yeah. Corner. Yeah. And Drew Holiday, 
being a threat with Middleton as well and Brooke Lopez. I don't think they can create the, create that same wall because these guys can hit threes at a consistent basis, especially when they get hot. Yeah. All right, so final predictions for that series. I'm saying Milwaukee in six. You guys go. I'm I'm saying seven, there. Milwaukee. I got Milwaukee in five. I got him in six, too. Bucks. All right, so everyone agrees that Milwaukee is making it to the next round. Easy Miami. Easy yeah. money, yo. Okay, final series for the Eastern Conference. We got the Brooklyn Nets, the big the three-headed monster, the big three that is going to, I mean, probably one of the greatest offensive scoring three three players on one team in NBA history, to be honest. I don't think even the 96 Bulls can handle this team. <laughs> <laughs> we got James Harden, Kevin Durant, Kyrie Irving all playing together in this don't series. Don't forget my boy BG. Yeah, Blake Griffin. They're all, healthy. Hey, yo. They're all healthy. The big three only played eight games together in the regular season, so this is going to be fun to watch. I wish Jalen Brown was healthy for the series because that would have been a serious matchup with Kemba, Jalen, and Jason going up against yeah, the Hubie, Hubie. Yeah, would have been nasty. Yeah. yeah. And unfortunately, unfortunately, Jalen Brown went, went out with the wrist injury and got surgery, so he won't be in for the series. But they still got Jason Tatum, who dropped a 50-piece in the playing tournament. And they also got Kemba, who is playing better for the most part. He had a rough start to the season, but he's kind of getting it together now. But is he healthy enough to be a consistent number two option for this team that needs all the offensive help in the world to go up against a juggernaut like James Harden, Kevin Durant, and Kyrie Irving? Don't forget my boy BG, yo, and DJ. (laughs) DJ, yeah, yeah. DJ, I think DJ. I think DJ is just gonna De- DeAndre is just gonna sit on the bench. Right. I, think he's gonna play. I think they're saving like Cle- the next round. <laughs> yeah, I feel like Clexton's gonna be playing this one. Yo, I I say nuts. I say nuts and say. Oh, you don't. Oh, you don't say. You don't say. Secret. <laughs> okay. Whoever who, whoever says Boston's coming out of the series is on crack. <laughs> I'm gonna say sweep by Brooklyn Nets. Ooh, yeah. sweep! I, I, I think I think it's a sweep thing. Yeah, sweep I ten. think it's a I think it's a gentleman sweep. I think Jason Tatum's gonna. I think even a, if Tatum drops a fifty, they're, they'll still lose. Yeah, I don't I don't know, man. I, I feel like uh, I feel like there's gonna be a night where where uh, Nets defense won't come through. And I feel like I feel like um, there's gonna be a there's gonna be a night where Celtics threes start falling and their defense comes through and. Well, that, I feel like, hmm? no, no, go ahead. no, no, I just feel like Tatum's going to come out. Like, I, I'm not saying only Tatum's going to step up, but I feel like the defense, including Tatum and like everyone else hitting threes and stuff, I feel like that's going to, but that's the that's thing. Happen one game. But that's the thing, though. Like, like, we know Brooklyn's defense isn't there, but their defense is their offense. They don't have enough offensive power to take her, to take on the Brooklyn. It's like, no matter how much yeah. they want to try, Jason can drop a. 50 piece, but Kemba has to drop that too in order for them to win. No, I mean, Kemba, uh, they, they, I mean, Boston still has some solid players. The only guy they don't have is Brown, right? Yo, Nets have that, um, that, that rookie or that guy from Europe who was like the top Mike, player. Mike, Bernier. Oh, Mike, Mike James. Mike, Mike James. James. Mike James is going to be their X Factor for this series. I'm calling it right now. Is he even going to play? I don't know if he's going to get married. I, I think he will. <laughs> he'll be, I think he'll be like an ace, uh, Eighth or seventh option, no? Uh, yeah, but that's not X Factor, man. I know, but like I'm just saying, like I just think he will make key will make what key like plays in the game to help, you know, like I think X Factor is Kevin Durant. He's gonna draw, he's gonna average thirty. That's not X Factor, bro. That is the factor. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, if, yeah. I think his career doesn't work out, and he gets another kid. Uh, uh, if he tears his Achilles again, he might end up on the X Factor. <laughs> 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 but, but the thing, <laughs> but the thing is, though, Kevin Durant is going to be a factor for all of this. I mean, he can pick any of these guys. I think Kyrie is going to go off against his old team, right? He's playing Boston, and I think Kevin Durant, man, Kevin Durant's healthy throughout this whole series. This, they're not going to lose. They're going to win the championship. Yo, yeah, Kevin Durant is a nasty so. player, bro. He almost shut us down too, yo. <clears throat> yeah. Tristan so, Thompson's getting switched on Durant too. So that's, um, 
he's gonna end up being Kevin Kardashian after those crosses, bro. He had him. He had Tristan on his knees. And what about what about James Harden? He has history with Chloe too, right? Yeah. So it's a battle. It's a battle, but this is just a warm up for Giannis. Mm-hmm. And second round in the East is always something special. Yeah. Uh, yeah. First round in the East kind of usually a little bit lame. I mean, I think this is the first time that both conferences have like solid matchups from one through eight, where you don't feel like it's going to be a sweep for any of them. It's yeah, gonna... I think the only sweep is Brooklyn. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think, um, like we said, the Khloe Kardashian matchup with Tristan Thompson and James Harden. I think you're going to see Lamar Odom in the crowd a bit too, once or twice. But <laughs> who knows? Yo? Devin Booker might show up too, yo. <laughs> you might see Paul. You might see Paul Pierce put a uniform on. Yeah. He's still fucking play his old team. <laughs> I thought you said Paul George. No, I said Paul Pierce. Paul way, Pierce. Off, way off he's going to come through. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so we're, I'm going with Boston in five. What? Boston? Oh. Five. <laughs> Sorry. No, <laughs> you, you, already lo- you already locked it. You already no, locked it. No, Boston's going to get taken out in five is what I meant. I think oh, Brooklyn. Yeah. I think Brooklyn. Nah, you know what? I'm going, yeah, I'm going five games. Brooklyn's going to take them out of five. Yeah, you know, I'm, going, I'm, going, I'm going Brooklyn five, too. Fuck that. Let's go. I'm going to sweep. Gentleman sweep or like a legit sweep? Legit sweep, man. There's uh, there's no point of Boston. The Boston might shut down Tatum or just like kind of tell him, hey, there's no point if you try and go hard. <laughs> shut him down. It's just what's it called? Uh, if Jalen Brown was healthy for the series, well, would you have still said sweep? Yeah, Jalen Brown wins. might risk it all at this wins. point. <laughs> Say that again. They can get two wins, but the, this Boston team was having trouble all year, man. That's why they're all the way at the seventh in the yeah. play-in and seventh seed. So yeah. you can't expect right. much of them um, from the beginning. Injuries. They don't have a cent. They don't have their center situation figured out. Mm. Um, they're playing Reggie Williams. Was it those Williams guys a lot? Robert Williams and mm-hmm. yeah, Robert Williams the third and Grant Williams. Yeah, so two of these guys. If those guys are getting minutes on a team, that team's not that great, man. So you gotta look at it that way. There's just no chance. Yeah, for, <laughs> for sure. Yeah, let let's uh, let let's uh, let the Boston fans know it's a wrap. And you know what's That's funny? Me, man. I love Boston. I love the Celtics and uh, Brad Stevens. But just looking at their roster, it's just two different levels of play. It's depleted, bro. Depleted roster. You they saw that. Have, they should have gotten rid, rid of the other guy, the white uh, rebounder. The thesis? Oh, Daniel Tice. Tice. Yeah. Daniel Tice. They should, have not, they should have never got rid of uh, Gordon Hayward. Yeah. 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 But um, like they basically just let him walk for nothing, right? Right. They got Marcus Smart. Marcus Smart might be able to do something, but again, he's if he's smart, right? Smart ass, yeah. Smart ass if he can, if he can, uh, if he can pull one of those Steph Curry games out of his ass, like he did against the Raptors in the bubble, maybe, maybe get a game because he stole a game from us last season in the bubble. But uh, I was gonna say something. Um. Yeah, no, oh yeah. What was crazy was that Boston finessed Brooklyn for five years just to be the lower seed against them five years later to see Brooklyn come back, rebuild this team, faster than <laughs> possibly could win a championship. And yeah, Brooklyn signed three superstars basically. They have three superstars on their roster. So it's kind of sad for Boston. Danny Ainge didn't do a really good job in pulling the trigger on some trades. To win a championship in the time frame he had since finessing Brooklyn for the those first round picks. Yeah, it's full circle. So back to yeah. where it was when it was like heavy favorites for Brooklyn back in the day. Yeah, yeah. sad to see, but it is what it is. Um, yeah, shout out to Boston fans, bro. It's gonna be a quick and easy, quick and uh, it's gonna be a quick death. Yeah. All right, well, that's going to wrap it up for these first-round series. Once it's all said and done, we'll come back and re- and predict our second-round series um, predictions going into the conference finals. But any final thoughts on any of these series before we wrap it up? 
Uh, I think this year they're going to be closer, especially due to, due to the play-in. The teams coming out of the play-in are going to surprise and shock a little bit. Mm-hmm. And uh, only sweep I see is Brooklyn. Boston getting swept. Only seven-game series I see is Clippers and Dallas. Mm-hmm. You don't see you don't see the Denver Nuggets. I mean, I know we said six games, but there's a possibility for that to go to seven. And I think the Milwaukee one, Milwaukee and things can go seven as well, right? Even Knicks and Hawks might go seven this point. Yeah, who knows? Yeah, there's a lot of Knicks and I think Knicks and Hawks is going to be a definite seven game series. Yeah, they might, well, yo, they might as well cut that to a five game series. No one's watching those games. <laughs> Put it as best of five. Be honest, yo, I'm I'm kind of glad Raptors are out this year. It gives us an opportunity to check these teams out and like and like let's see how they are, you know? Yeah, we'll check them mm-hmm. out. Everyone, yeah, we'll check them out. I mean, I think we would have gave them a run for their money. I mean, Brooklyn, I know we probably would have got slapped, but I think we could have took it to six games. Wait, wait. I think they're gonna be a few upsets this uh, this upcoming playoffs. I just can't believe how easy Philly's gonna have a uh, like how easy Philly's run's gonna be to get to the conference finals this year. Word. They're playing Washington, and they just got to beat either Hawks or New York to get to the conference finals. <laughs> They're lucky. Uh, uh, Milwaukee has a tough time getting there. Yeah, they got to play Miami, who basically they have nightmares from from last season in the bubble, and then they got to play Brooklyn in the second round to get to, you know, to have the chance yeah. to play Philly to get to the finals. <laughs> yeah, I think their their pro- their road is probably as hard as the Raptors' road was. When we got when we won the championship, oh yeah, yeah, you know them playing Brooklyn is basically like us playing. Well, if, if Golden State was healthy, but we got lucky and we got that mm-hmm. ring. All right, well that's gonna do it for this video. Appreciate everyone for tuning in and checking it out. And we'll be back, like I mentioned, with the second round predictions once the first round is over. But till then, stay blessed, stay woke, and please stay safe. Peace. Yo, don't forget to like, subscribe, and blah, blah, blah. Oh, fuck. I forgot to say that shit. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, shit. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. 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 The press I want for sure you gonna need.